Hey guys, Stanixos here. So today we'll be discussing the dragon sin of wrath Meliodas from the seven deadly sins. Specifically, we'll be trying to figure out just how powerful he is. Now note, I won't really be covering any feats from the four nights of the apocalypse sequel, but rather in this video, I will only be covering how Meliodas scales from the original series. And of course, I will be quantifying Meliodas strength in numbers so you can get a tangible grasp on how strong Meliodas is. However, the most important thing I'm trying trying to highlight in this video is the hierarchical view of Meliodas' strength, so keep that in mind if the methods feel a bit crude sometimes. And though I'll try to go over as much as possible, I obviously can't go over every single detail. But with that understood, let's get into it. So at the beginning of the series, in the very first few chapters, we actually get quite a good showing of the power to expect from even lower level characters through the introduction of the apprentice holy knight, Lord Twiggo. You see, Twiggo, with a mere casual swing of his blade, is able to bisect most of the trees in a forest, and yet again with another casual swing, he is able to cleanly cut off a large portion of a cliff. Now, as you could probably guess from this visual showing, both of these feats are usually calculated to be around city block level range, at around 44 and 88 tons of TNT respectively. Now you might not have noticed this, but Twiggo slashes are imbued with magic. This fact is actually very important, as it is tied to a scaling theme that will continually come up, that is, the full counter technique. You see, full counter is a technique that in effect reflects an opponent's attack, and there are two main variations of this technique. The first variation is a magical counter that reflects all direct magic attacks, but is useless against attacks without magic, like normal physical attacks. This is the variant that Meliodas uses. The second variation is a physical full counter that can reflect all physical attacks but is useless against magic based attacks. This is the variant that Estarosa uses. But regardless of the difference between the type of attack that these variants of full counter can reflect, it remains true that the fundamental essence of the full counter technique is that it reflects an opponent's attack. And interestingly, not only does it reflect the attack, but as Estorosa tells us, it reflects the attack at a new attack power that is manifold times the power of the original attack. Thus, given that manifold means at least three, going forward in this video, whenever an attack is full countered, we will assume it becomes three times its original power. Now, the first instance of a full counter relevant for scaling is against Lord Twiggo in this same fight against against Meliodas. You see, Lord Twiggo was able to withstand his own full countered attack with only minor injury. So given that we know that a casual swing from Twiggo was 88 tons of TNT or city block level, three times that is 264 tons of TNT, giving him a durability of at least multi city block level. Now Twiggo was later defeated by Meliodas, but it was through a stronger attack which he full countered. So that fight by itself doesn't really tell us anything about Meliodas' his own strength. However, you need to keep in mind that Twiggo was merely an apprentice holy knight, and a little later on in the Bastet dungeon arc, we were introduced to the weird fans who were full-fledged holy knights that were even thought to be stronger than the average holy knight. And a holy knight ruin, one of these weird fans, is in particular shown to boast a superior physical power, such that he even treats his armor as mere decoration and boasts that his body is as strong as steel, so there is no doubt that he is stronger and more durable than Twiggo. Yet Meliodas was easily able to take multiple of Ruin's attacks without much damage and was also easily able to beat Ruin with just a couple of punches. Thus at this point, we can comfortably say that Meliodas is at least multi-city block level in durability and attack potency. Now, in this same Bastet dungeon arc, the main focus was actually to rescue Ban, the fox sin of greed who was locked up in this so-called Bastet dungeon prison. And this prison was not a normal sized prison, it was actually a pretty huge building, so much so that it was 
easily visible from the nearby town as a towering structure, and even a single entrance to this Bastet dungeon is just slightly smaller in size than Dian, the giant who we know is over 9.1 meters tall. Yet upon reuniting, Meliolas and Ban, while just playing around with an arm wrestling competition to test out their strength, were able to completely destroy this gigantic structure. And this feat is usually calculated to be around 849 kilotons, thus giving them an attack potency of 424 kilotons each, which is large town level. Now, I have seen some calculations and some people argue that this feat belongs in the small town or town level range. However, I think the large town level range makes way more sense, primarily because the Bastet dungeon was not a regular building. You see, in addition to it being as huge as it is, Golgius, one of the weird fans, also cast a sealing spell around it that was said to be able to withstand the combined effort of over 10 tyrant dragons. Now even though we never really got to see a tyrant dragon in action, it is said that a single tyrant dragon could wipe out an entire town. So the fact that even 10 tyrant dragons together could not destroy this barrier, that would suggest that this feat of destroying the Bastet dungeon with this barrier needed an at least large town level attack potency. Furthermore, a little later on, at the end of the Visel Fight Festival arc, we see where Meliodas, while using a random twig, casually spit a mountain in two. And this feat is usually calculated to be in the large town range at about 196 kilotons. So given that this is something that Meliodas can do casually, it is reasonable to assume that while going against Ban in their arm wrestling match, he would muster up at least this level of power. Thus these things together make it more likely than not that the Bastet dungeon destruction is accurately at least within the large town range. But it doesn't end there because in the Visel fight festival arc, we see where Ban and Meliodas actually had a more serious fight. And in this fight, we see where it was said that multiple of Ban's punches is worth just one of Meliodas' punch. So even if we were to underestimate Ban and assume his punch is worth just half the power required to destroy the Bastet dungeon, that is 424 kilotons, then that would still mean that base Meliodas has an attack potency of at least three times that, which is around 1.2 megatons or small city level. Now note, this is further reinforced by the fact that even after Ban stole some of Meliodas' power and thus his base punches got even stronger than what we were already underestimating them to be, base Meliodas was still easily able to break Ban's arm with a punch of his own. Now I'm not sure if you've realized but so far Meliodas has actually not been using a weapon. I mean yeah, we have seen him use a broken sword for his full counter but that's not his own attack power and again yeah. Yeah, we have seen him use a twig to spit a mountain, but I mean come on, it's a twig. So in every fight I have covered so far, where Meliodas actually attacks with his own power, Meliodas has really just been kicking or punching, and it turns out there's a reason for this. You see, Meliodas, even in base, chooses not to use a weapon because he's too strong. So if he uses a weapon, he's afraid of what he'll be able to do. So this is actually an important point. Meliodas gets a considerable boost when he's using a good weapon. And the first good weapon we get to see Meliodas use is Liz's sword. So right before the Visel fight festival, in the capital of the dead arc, we were introduced to Gilea, a holy knight who was amped up by red demon blood, and thus as such, she was stronger than even an above average holy knight like Ruin. And this was clearly seen in the fact that she was able to take on three members of the seven deadly sins, Ban, Base Meliodas, and Dion by herself. And then later in the Visel fight festival arc, she met the sins again, and she was described as being incomparably stronger than before, which makes sense given that she was no longer in the half death state that she used to get to the capital of the dead, and she had much better equipment. And again, at Visel, she was thoroughly beating down base Meliodas. Like even Jericho, who before was so much slower than Ban that he used her attacks to shave his beard after being amped up on red demon demon blood was now easily keeping up with Ban and completely trashing him. So at this point I think it's fair to say that a red blood amped up new generation holy knight like Gilea is at least twice as strong as base Meliodas, putting her at 
1.4 megatons. However, even Gilea and the other new generation Red Bunt Amped Holy Knights are described as weak compared to the prior generation of Holy Knights that were amped by Red Demon blood, like Gilea's father Dale. And this was clearly borne out where base Meliodas and band together while attacking Demon Transform Dale could not do any damage. So for now, we'll assume that Demon Transform Dale is at least twice as strong as Gilea at 4.8 megatons. However, as soon as Meliodas gets Liz's sword, he just easily slices Demon Transform Dale into pieces as if Dale were merely a piece of paper. Even King, who was also having a hard time, emphasized this fact. So again, at this point, we can assume that base Meliodas, with a weapon, is at least twice as strong as Dale, making him 9.6 megatons, which is city level. Now though Liz's sword is indeed a good weapon, at the end of the day, it is still more or less just a normal weapon. And you see, as King explains, a weapon can help draw out and focus a person's magic power. So if a lake represents the totality of one's magic power, without a weapon, the person cannot draw out more than a handful of their true power. And with a normal weapon like Liz's sword, they can draw out about a cupful of their power. However, all of the seven deadly sins have special weapons known as sacred treasures that when used can draw out exponentially more of their power. Going from merely that of a cup of power with a normal weapon to a house worth of power with a sacred treasure. So we see where Meliodas with Liz's sword could not even scratch an Albion and the sword shattered. Though it did shatter in part due to the fact that it had been racking up damage from prior battles such as with Hendrickson. However, we see where when Meliodas' sacred treasure Lost Vein was returned to him by Merlin, he was easily able to slice through the Albion. Now to truly appreciate this feat, we have to figure out how durable the Albion is. So firstly, we already knew that Meliodas with Liz's sword had an attack potency of at least 9.6 megatons or city level. So the Albion is obviously at least that. However, we can go a bit deeper because just prior to the introduction of the Albion, we were also introduced to combat classes, which in essence is just a numerical representation of a person's true strength. Now a combat class is actually the summation of three components and thus it can get a bit wonky. So for for the most part, we'll just be using them as guides rather than treating it as an exact science. Then we also know that there's a hierarchy to the lower tier demons in the Seven Deadly Sins verse, with the Red Demon being amongst the weakest with a combat class of 1300. And these Red Demons typically have an energy blast, which has been shown to destroy a large portion of the Fairy King Forest and the Sacred Tree. And the power of this blast is usually calculated to be around 27 megatons or city level. Now remember, the combat class of a red demon is only 1300. Compare that to an Albion on the other hand, which is over 5500. That is more than a four times difference. Thus from combat classes alone, we can assume that an Albion has an attack potency and durability, which is likely at least 108 megatons or mounted level. Now yes, combat classes can get a bit wonky, being that it is made of multiple components. However, in this instance, I feel comfortable using this 4 times multiplier derived from it as an at least value for multiple reasons. Firstly, even if you were to drastically underestimate the Albion and assume that its energy blast is at the same level as that of the Red Demon, we have seen where the same Albion that Meliodas was fighting tanked its own full countered energy blast with only minor damage to its face. Remember, full counter would have powered up that attack times 3, making it at least 81 megatons or high city level, not far away from mountain level. Secondly, these monsters are described as mountain-like in size themselves. We have even seen where a casual swing from an Albion 2 is capable of taking off the top of a hill. And thirdly, Albions are stated to be on par with a grey demon blood amped Hendrickson known as Ash Hendrickson, which makes sense given that the Albion's combat class is stated to be 5,500 and Ash Hendrickson's combat class is 5,800. 
Now, this is relevant because we know that Bass Hendrickson, being a Holy Knight captain, would be far stronger than the Holy Knights under him, like a Red Blood Amped Gilea. And we know that at minimum, this Bass Hendrickson is at least comparable to Meliodas with Liz's sword, given that we've seen him holding his own against this Meliodas. But he scales even higher, given that we have seen him take his own full countered Hellblaze attack with only relatively minor damage. Thus, we know that Bass Hendrickson is at least 28.8 megatons. Now yes, Bayes Hendrickson did also have the feat of by just lending a small amount of his power to Helbram, they were able to overcome Wrath Meliodas, which shocked even Helbram. However, I won't use this for scaling since Helbram was also borrowing powers from 20 other knights, and the fact that Bayes Hendrickson was eventually beaten by full power Gil Thunder, who was shown to be no match for first demon Mark mode Meliodas. But we know that Hendrickson then amped himself with red demon blood, which remember, converted even the apprentice holy knight Jericho, who was so weak compared to Ban that she could only merely be a barber for him at Bastet Dungeon, to an opponent who could easily keep up with Ban at the Visel Fight Festival arc. As a matter of fact, the boost provided by the red demon blood is so profound that it was able to turn a normal bird into a monster that was able to beat several dozen men. Thus it is reasonable to assume that the red demon blood would have amped Hendrickson to at least twice his base form, making him at least 57.6 megatons. Then we know that Ash Hendrickson was the subsequent form of Hendrickson which came about when red demon blood amped Hendrickson amped himself even farther by taking in grey demon blood. Now again, this was at least a two times power up for multiple reasons. Firstly, the Grey Demon is described as far more powerful than the Red Demon, and this is reflected not only in combat classes, with the Grey Demon's combat class being over twice that of the Red Demon's, but it is also visualized more clearly in the fact that a Red Demon was completely vaporized by an attack from Gil Thunder, whereas the same attack did nothing to a Grey Demon. Furthermore, in comparison to Red Demon Blood Amped Hendrickson, to whom the Seven Deadly Sins could at least least do damage to. Ash Hendrickson on the other hand could just not be damaged at all. Like we saw where all the major holy knights of the kingdom did a combined magical attack of their strongest attacks and it did no damage whatsoever. And each of the sins individually and together in some instances did no damage at all. So again, an at least two times multiplier for the grey demon blood amp is more than fair. Thus Ash Hendrickson was at least 115.2 megatons or mountain level. So given all of the surrounding context, and at least mountain level durability for the Albion should be more than fair. So from this encounter, we know that Meliodas with Lost Vein is at least mountain level. And by the way, at this point, it was not just Meliodas who was at this level. King with his sacred treasure was also shown to evaporate a large portion of an Albion too. So again, it is not even just Meliodas who is being portrayed to have advanced to another level. But just as before when we mentioned that Meliodas didn't use a weapon because he's too strong, it also turns out that up to this point he's been carrying out all of these feats without having access to most of his powers. You see, after the love of Meliodas' life Liz was killed by a demon, Meliodas went into a rage and just completely wiped out an entire country from the map, leaving behind just a black empty space of nothingness of where this country Danafor used to be. So because of this, fearing that Meliodas might lose control again and wipe out Leonis like he did to Danafor, Merlin took away and sealed most of Meliodas' power. Now this feat is usually calculated to be island level at around 30 gigatons. And again, I am comfortable with this calculation for multiple reasons. Firstly, Meliodas with most of his power sealed and a king who had not yet grown his wings are wiping out Albions that as we've already discussed, by all likelihood have an at least mountain level durability. So saying that an enraged, unsealed Meliodas is just in the large mountain level or mountain level range makes no sense at all. I mean, we even see mountains around Danofor, whose heights were eclipsed 
many times over by the darkness that Meliodas released. Like even the hole just below ground that Meliodas left, we know is over 30,000 feet deep. That is taller than the above sea level height of Mount Everest, the tallest above sea level mountain on earth. Secondly, immediately after the Albion fight, but before Meliodas got back his powers, the commandment of truth Galand showed up. And this still sealed Meliodas was just utterly powerless before him. Him. Like we clearly saw that base Meliodas with Lost Vein, who we know was at least 108 megatons or mountain level, could not do any damage to Galan. Then, first demon mark mode Meliodas while also using Lost Vein, similarly could not do any damage to Galan. And note, first demon mark mode would reasonably amp Meliodas by at least two times, given that on every occasion we had seen it, the amp in power was drastic. We saw this for example at the Visel Fight Festival arc where Ban, having literally stole all of base Meliodas' strength and added it to his own, was still powerless before this first demon mark mode Meliodas. And similarly, Gil Thunder who could fight somewhat evenly against base Meliodas was shown to be no match for first demon mark mode Meliodas. So this first demon mark mode Meliodas, who could do no damage against Galan, was at least 216 megatons. Then a higher demon mode transformed Meliodas who was also quoting Lost Vein in Darkness, could also not do any damage to Galand. Now note, the Demon's Race Darkness is a type of destroyer magic, and when a weapon is quoted in this darkness, it can increase the weapon's power up to 10 times. So without even taking into account that Meliodas was in a higher level of Demon Transform mode, which, like Wrath mode, would make him substantially stronger than his normal Demon Mark mode, Meliodas' attack potency at this point would still be at least 10 times 216 megatons or 2.16 gigatons. Yet Meliodas still could not do any damage to Galand. We even see where Meliodas seemingly just tried to pour all his darkness into a vertical attack and it still did nothing against Galand. Even Galand himself was surprised at how weak Meliodas had become. So Galand at this point, whose magic was completely sealed, was still easily twice as strong as a max sealed Meliodas, making making him at least 4.3 gigatons or island level. But when Meliodas' powers were unsealed and he got them back, we see where, in base mode with Lost Vein, he was easily able to do massive damage to Galan. As a matter of fact, even without Lost Vein in base mode, he was still easily making Galan bleed. Even Galan had to acknowledge that Meliodas at this point was stronger than him. And again, it makes sense that Meliodas at this point would at least need to be island level if he would eventually want to contend with the commandments in their most powerful states, like Galand, who when his magic becomes unsealed, we see where in his amped up critical overstate, the mere shockwave of his attack eclipses a mountain and continues onwards to take the tops of multiple mountains for an unknown distance. And worse, even characters above this unsealed Galand, like Escanor, to whom this critical over unsealed attack could barely even pierce. So given all of this, it completely fits that an enraged unsealed Meliodas, who destroyed Danafor, was at least island level. Now by now, you should have noticed that trend. All of Meliodas' power-ups are not really power-ups in the traditional sense, or rather, they are just him getting back access to more of his original power. And over 3000 years ago, in the Great War of Demons vs Angels, when Meliodas was still the leader of the Ten Commandments, it was established that Meliodas' most powerful form was a mode known as Assault Mode. This Assault Mode is the mode which is said that allows him access to his full demon powers. Now to get a grasp on how strong Assault Mode Meliodas is, we need to speak about the commandments. So as we already established, an unsealed Meliodas is at least 30 gigatons or island level. And again, this unsealed Meliodas was already established to be stronger than Magic Sealed Galand, Droll, another commandment who he continually manhandled, and Galaxinia, another commandment to whom he did the same. However, this unsealed Meliodas 
even after taking numerous attacks from multiple members of the Ten Commandments to do his most powerful attack, the revenge counter, was easily stopped by Estorosa with a single hand. So at this point, it is more than fair to say that Estorosa is at least twice as strong as Unsealed Meliodas, putting him, while in base form, to at least 60 gigatons, still within the Alon level range. However, we know that Estorosa's max is still quite a bit higher because the Archangel Tarmiel told us that an Archangel is roughly equal in strength to two commandments, and we know that Tarmiel has a grace, a power bestowed onto him by the Supreme Deity that allows him to instantly create the ocean part of an enclosed space known as the Domain of God, a feat which is usually calculated to be around country level at varying values, but for this video, we'll use 368 teratons since it is a reasonable close to mid-range. Now usually, a feat like this would likely just fit into a hacks or unusable category and thus wouldn't really have any relevance to scaling. However, in this instance, I think at least the attack potency of the Archangels can be scaled to this calculated effect of this grace for a couple of reasons. Firstly, like the commandments, we know that the graces are basically just units of power. This was emphasized by the fact that Male mentions that without his grace sunshine, the commandments are the only thing that he has left filling that void of power. Secondly, Tarmiel mentions that you have to be at least on the level of an archangel to break out of the domain of God, which my new be was created by two graces and is an oceanic world filled with endless whirlwind and lightning that continues until it rips an opponent down to a molecular level. So this statement and the fact that it's not only a space but a continuous attack implies that the grace and the archangels are on a somewhat similar level, especially given the further context that the curse is placed Based on Elizabeth and Meliodas by the Demon King and the Supreme Deity needed at least Demon King level power to destroy them. And thirdly, it is not an unreasonable jump from what we had already gotten to. So for example, a casual punch from Escanor was able to bring Estorosa to his knees even though Estorosa was blocking. Remember, this is the same Estorosa who casually took an unsealed Meliodas' revenge counter with one hand without any damage. So Escanor was already casually at least 60 gigatons or island level for easily bringing a blocking Estorosa to his knees. But we then saw where Escanor took his own full countered attack while using Rita, thus making him at least 180 gigatons or a large island level. And Estorosa even took a cruel sun pre noon from this Escanor, so we would expect Estorosa to be at least large island level as well. And remember, this was neither of their max. So given that Estorosa and other characters like Escanor were already in the large island level range, a max for Estorosa and the Archangels in the country level is not an unreasonable leap at all. And of course, Zeldris the Executioner being the most powerful commandment who wields the Demon King's magic obviously at least scales to Estorosa. Yet an Assault Mode Meliodas was easily able to restrain and suppress the two strongest commandments, Estorosa and Zeldris with his darkness. And Zeldris even specifically mentions how impressive it is that Meliodas is able to restrain him, given that Zeldris has the magic of the Demon King. So a base assault mode Meliodas is casually stronger than the country level Tarmiel and all of the commandments. And remember, when using destroyer magic to coat his blade loss vein, that should increase his attack potency up to 10 times, making him at least large country level. So that's it. Assault mode Meliodas, his most powerful form from his prime over 3000 years ago, there isn't anywhere higher to go. Or so you think, because even in the war 3000 years ago, while Meliodas and Elizabeth were up against the supreme deity and the demon king, we had never seen him display a mode higher than assault mode, and even in this form presumably, he was completely wrecked by the demon king and supreme deity. And rightfully so, the demon king is the one who created the demon world, and he's so powerful that he can't even exist in the human world for too long. So him beating Assault Mode Meliodas, who isn't even strong enough to break his curse, should be expected. However, as you would have probably guessed, some people made the claim that the Demon King should be auto-scaled to at least planetary because he made the Demon World. Now 
Now, obviously, that's not how scaling works. We can't just use this one statement for which there is no further context, like how he did it, how long did it take, was it just hacks, and just extrapolate from ignorance to fit an agenda. Similar to how it would make no sense to scale the sacred tree to some arbitrary attack potency or any attack potency at all simply because it created the fear realm, or say it is indestructible simply because it created the immortality elixir. And likewise, saying that the demon king not being able to stay in the human world is proof that he should also at least be planetary, again just does not follow. Because unlike some people would have you believe, it's not like him just being on the planet causes it to instantly explode. No, what actually happens is that it is a rejection phenomenon caused by the balance of power being tipped by his presence, such that the world will start to reject him, causing an escalation of natural disasters like earthquakes, tornadoes, and hailstorms until the world ultimately destroys itself. Now note, it is indeed possible that the minimum amount of power that a character must have to tip this balance is indeed planetary, but there is nothing in the actual source material of Seven Deadly Sins that states or even supports that claim. And it's not like there is even some universal rule in anime that would support this, given that in common anime and manga like DBZ for example, you have multiple planetary and way above planetary characters who can exist on a planet without the planet destroying itself. Now the reason this is relevant is because as it turns out, for over 3000 years, Melio has been hiding his true power. And as you should have probably guessed by now, the reason he's been hiding it is because he's too strong. You see, when Meliodas acknowledges his true power, it automatically makes him a Demon King level 3. This was first hinted at in Purgatory when Meliodas acquired a power able to destroy the Demon King. And it was again shown when he was able to destroy the Demon Kings and the Supreme Deity's curses. However, because Meliodas' true power makes him at least demon king level, he also triggers the rejection phenomenon and can stay in the mortal world. So we know that true power Meliodas is also easily at least multi-continental. However, it doesn't even end there. Because as Zeldris tells us, Meliodas with his true power is not only equivalent to the demon king, but rather he is far beyond him. And in keeping with this, we saw that true power Meliodas was even able to destroy the commandments themselves. Themselves. Now this is significant because not even the combined attack of all of the seven deadly sins that was full countered over five times not even that attack could destroy the commandments themselves, yet Meliodas with his true power could accomplish this feat. Now some people will say, oh, that combined attack which beat the Demon King was only country level because the Demon King only mentioned that it could destroy the country of Britannia. But this is as silly as saying, the Demon King in mountain form was only mountain level because he said, how dare you defy a mountain? Like come on now. So though we don't know Meliodas' full power, we know that without a doubt, in his strongest form, he sits comfortably in the at least mid to high multi-continental range, though his actual power is likely much higher. Anyway, that's the video guys, and of course it was a very long one to me. So if you liked the video and would like to see more videos like this, then give the video a like and subscribe, and consider supporting the channel. But anyway, that's it for now, see you guys next time.